I'm Caitlin Jenkins, the Family Law Vlogger, and today on the vlog we're talking about parenting coordination. I'm delighted to be joined by my colleague Claire Molyneux, who is a solicitor, she's a mediator, and she's also a parenting coordinator. So parenting coordination might sound like a new term to you, you may not have heard about it. It is relatively new in England, but it has been very successful in other jurisdictions for a long time. So let's turn to Claire and find out a bit more. So first of all, Claire, what is parenting coordination? Thanks, Caitlin. Yeah, well, as you say, um, it's something or a term that parents in England and Wales probably won't have heard of before, but it's something that has been practiced for decades in some of other areas in the world, as you've just mentioned. And what it aims to do really is to help parents who have come out of the court process or have a parenting agreement and are struggling to implement the terms of their court order. Um, what we know and what is quite understandable really is that if you've been through court proceedings, you've been through a, a highly emotive experience and um, our court process is really fantastic. Um, it's fantastic at, he at helping families if there's a safety issue or if there's a domestic abuse issue or something like that. But one thing that the judges and most family law professionals recognise is that if you have a conflicted relationship, for, for whatever reason, there can be lots of reasons for that, the court process can actually make that worse for you because as you're going through the proceedings, you often have to focus on the other parent's negative parenting practices, as it were. And then at the end of that very difficult and emo emotional journey, um, you, you lose the support of all of the professionals around you and you're suddenly expected to work together as parents, having had that difficult experience and um, to, do, to do the best in terms of communications together um, to get on with the practical implementation of your order. And quite understandably, that can be difficult for lots of families. And so parenting coordination arose to try and help provide some ongoing professional support for families who are stuck in that difficult situation, really. I see. So it's for people who've already got a parenting an agreement or an order and it's to help them then move forward separately but together to, to how to use that to the greatest effect for themselves and for their children. So what sort of families does it tend to be suitable for? So, yeah, so as, as you've just mentioned, um, if you have that court order and you're, you're struggling to um, implement the terms. So for example, court orders in England and Wales might typically say that parents are going to share the school holidays equally. But if you find it difficult to communicate, how do you actually decide between yourselves what that's going to look like? Um, so it's, it's parents essentially who find, the who find their communications together difficult um, and who recognise that and recognise that it's affecting their well-being and most importantly could be affecting the well-being of their children and who both acknowledge once they've spoken to the par parenting coordinator that there's perhaps something they can both do to try and help improve their parenting relationship. So people decide that this is something that's going to help them and they, they come to you. What might a sort of PC, a parenting coordinator journey look like for a family? What does it actually look and feel like? Yeah, so it's got lots of different elements to it. Um, and what we know is that um, changing, um, a, a sort of transitioning, I guess, from a, a relationship together to a parenting relationship and improving communication isn't something that comes with an overnight fix. Um, so from that point of view, um, we ask parents to agree to come into the process with us for between a year and two years typically. Um, but it's not the case that you will have lots of meetings throughout that entire period. Typically what will happen is your parenting coordinator um, with your joint assistance, both of you feeding in, will get an idea of what's causing the challenges between you and what you both perceive to be the difficulties. Um, and then over a, a number of concentrated sessions at the beginning of that journey, you'll work with your parenting coordinator to look at um, different elements, which I'll talk, talk about a little bit more in a second. Uh, and then as the process goes on, um, you won't see your parenting coordinator so often, but they may check in with you from time to time where you can come back for that support. And the idea is to help embed new habits, essentially positive habits that can help everyone's well-being, first and foremost, your children. Um, and the way that we go about it really is, well, parenting coordinators wear lots of hats, um, but then they might have a bit of a coaching hat, they might have a bit of an educator hat, 
and the educator hat is simply because parenting coordinators have been highly trained in the effects of parenting conflict on children and their feelings of well-being and how it can affect their outcomes throughout their lifetime so we're able to share that information and that really helps parents to feel motivated to want to put in place a better system really and um, parenting coordinators will act as a mediator a lot so if there's something in the parenting agreement such as a family wedding coming up and something that requires a bit of flexibility we can help parents mediate that element of things and there is a small um uh, uh, well uh, uh, something called the decision making function of a parenting coordinate coordinator now parents don't want parenting coordinators sorry don't want to have to make decisions really because they want parents to have to do that but if parents are stuck on a small point they can give the parenting coordinator permission to make a decision on a small point so that everyone can move forward um, but just in general overview what we try to help parents to work towards is, is looking forward initially. So looking at what values do they really want to have as parents and what do they want their children to say when their children are 30 and looking back at and talking about the experience, hopefully really positively. And then from there, we help parents to look at their communication styles and what, what might be causing sort of triggers and things like that in order to help with some practical changes that are then implemented over the remainder of the, the term with a parenting coordinator, which can really help bring about positive change. And so just like, sorry, lots of different lots of different skills and tools to really help a couple who are parenting separately but love their children to, to really interpret an order or interpret an agreement and really work together to sort of actually make it work in practice. It sounds like it's a very sort of practical kind of hands-on but lots of different ways of trying to help a couple. Yeah, I mean, it's known to be a practical intervention and each, um, each relationship with parents is, is going to I mean the parenting coordinator builds a bespoke program for that family. So that's just to give you really a general flavour of the types of work that a parenting coordinator might do with some parents. And I suppose the million dollar question is, Claire, does it work? Do we find that it works for couples and, and most importantly for their children? Yeah, well, as we know, it's newly established in England and Wales, so we don't have any English or Welsh based research at the moment, but there's plenty of research that's been undertaken overseas. And, and what we know is that it doesn't work for every family, but for the families it does work well for, which is a good proportion, it can have really positive outcomes. It can make a real difference to both parents and children's feeling of well being. And um, it is said to pretty much cut in half those families prospects of returning to court again because we know that families who are highly conflicted sometimes feel that they have no option but to go back to the court repeatedly and that can be extremely draining and expensive and so on and it can help remedy that for these families. Claire that's super helpful and, and fantastic really really interesting and really um, practical and pragmatic way of sort of supporting families for the longer term once they've come out of having an agreement or, or a court order. So if people want to find out a bit more how do they do so? Um, well we now have a dedicated website for all those who have been trained by the FLIP faculty and um, the address is https colon forward slash forward slash parenting coordinators.co.uk and you can go onto the website and find out everything you need to know about parenting coordination and also meet all of the trained parenting coordinators you can click onto a map and find out where they practice and so on and so forth and then get in touch with anybody who um, you think might be an appropriate fit for your family. Claire, that's great. Thank you very much. And your details and the details of that website with all the parenting coordinators on will be, will be at the bottom of this blog. And as always with the Family Law blog, this is only general information. If you need advice about your particular circumstance, then do please contact Claire or any of the details uh, below the blog for more assistance with your particular circumstance. In the meantime, Claire, thank you very much. Thanks, Caitlin.